Hi, I want to share with you all one of my favorite uh, uh, effects, processes, things in DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion page. It is a method to automatically connect any two points, even points that are moving around, points in footage, points in motion graphics. I'll show you more soon. It's very cool and it has tons of potential. But first, this is the last video I will be recording in this apartment. I'm in the middle of moving. It'll be a process. So for those of you wondering, this is a closet that goes to the living room. And then back there is the bathroom. And then just outer frame, we have a, another closet uh, out to the deck, the observatory and the flower cutting room. Okay, into the video. This is a process that I discovered while I was working on a much larger project that I talked about in a previous video. I used it here and here as well. And like I said, there's so much potential. So I wanna jump right in, cause it's already late. So that means this is going to be a quick video. We're here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page and I'm going to drag a fusion composition onto the timeline and then jump right into the fusion page by clicking this button that down here. And here we have our default node panel view with just one media out, whatever we build on the fusion page, we will connect to that media out, which will send it back to the edit page. And for this demonstration, I am very quickly going to create a background node. I'm going to make that white and then I'm going to click this button to add a circle mask to that. And then if we pull that up in a viewer, which I did with one or two to pull it up in either one of these viewers, we have this little white circle. Next, I'm going to create a transform node. I pulled up this search bar by pressing shift space. And now we have this very simple three node node tree. And in that transform, I'm just going to pull down size. And remember right now we are previewing this background node, but if we preview the transform, you'll see that acted upon that shape. I'm gonna make this even smaller for what we are going to do. I'm gonna right click on center, go to modify with perturb, and you will see that instantly changes shape. And if we scrub, you'll see this is now just roaming freely around our scene. And we're gonna click this modifiers button up here. Now we have all these custom controls. I've talked about this entire process in an entire other video I'll have linked. But really quickly, you have your default starting value here and these controls will affect how this ball moves around our scene. This is controlling both the X and Y coordinates. So if I pull down X scale and X, Y, you'll see that now this motion is happening much more towards the center of the screen, but it's okay. We can pull that back up and I'm just gonna turn on wobble and maybe it'll speed as well. And now it is a lot more active all over the place. I'm probably gonna bring this Y scale down a bit. Yeah, so now this white ball is just flying around our scene. That's really cool. But what we're gonna do next is I'm going to take this little three node node tree, copy that entire thing, deselect that, click paste. We have another, and then I'm just going to create two more. And if you preview any of these, they will look exactly the same. And that is because the random motion that this modifier is generating is controlled by this random seed. So what we wanna do is come into each of these next three transforms, go to the modifier and just click this reseed. You'll see that changes to another random seed. So if we preview those side by side, now these will have different motion. And we're just gonna do that with all of them. Great, and then if you connect the little gray box outputs of all of these into one another, you can create a little bunch of merge nodes. And then if you preview that final merge, you will have these four flying white balls all over the screen. And you know what? I'm even gonna come into all of these transforms and just make them even smaller. Yeah, and I'll copy that. Paste, 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 cool. Now these are flying around doing their thing. Now this is where the magic happens, but first I have to explain one system in Fusion and that is publishing. If I were just to create a, a background node and pipe that into a transform, you see I have these transform controls and I could just move this anywhere using these centers. I'll, I'll pull this down, down just to show and I can move these parameters and I could right click on this center and go to publish. And you'll see instantly, it'll look like it sets a keyframe, but this is always enabled. Then if I were to say, create another background, say this is a green background, create another transform, preview that here, I could scale this down. And then on that transform, I want to right click on center and want to connect to, 
Now, spoiler alert, we have these perturbs here because they do it for you. But if we came down to transform two, which is what we just set that publish on, then we can go to center. And then now if I go back to that first transform and change anything, those values have been connected inside the software. Now you can actually do this with expressions as well, but most of the time, if you can do it with publishing and the connect menu, it's better but you have some more flexibility with how complicated expressions can get. So that's cool. It just links these two values. But as we showed when I went there, uh, when we set that modifier, it automatically published that new coordinate for when it zooms around the scene. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pull up this merge with our little flying balls over here. And then I'm going to create one new background We'll go ahead and make this, I don't know, just, just a bright sort of pale blue. We'll see how this goes. And into this node, I'm going to create a series of masks. And we're gonna do that with this third tool, the polygon node. I'm gonna click that, pull up that background on viewer two and on polygon with this first click append tool selected. I'm just going to click and click, and that will give us these two points. And then on that polygon now, if we right click on that mask, we can go to polygon polyline down here, publish, publish points. That's what we want. And then in the inspector, underneath that polygon, you'll see now point zero and point one with exact coordinate spaces. Now watch, in that polygon, in the inspector, I'm gonna go to that first point, right click, and go to connect to perturb one value. And you'll, you'll see these aren't connected yet, but that point now instantly jumped. And if we look at our first viewer, you'll see that now that point is tied to the center of one of these little white balls. And even if we scrub around, you'll see it is always tied to that point. It is looking at the value after the shake modifier of the center, and it is connecting that to one of the ends of this line we just created. So now we can go to point two, connect to perturb two or one dash one value. And in our second viewer here, you can't see anything, but that's because we need to pull up the border width just a hair and now we have it. And now let's go ahead and drag this up, connect these two outputs that'll make a new merge. And when we preview that merge, you'll see that now we have these little flying balls with this one pale blue line connecting them. If you want the line behind these, you can always come into this merge uh, control T We'll swap that foreground and background element. And now wherever these balls fly around the screen, even off screen, they will stay connected like this and it'll shrink and expand as it needs to. So now I'm going to create a whole host of new polygon nodes and then connect them to all these miscellaneous flying balls and until we get a web of connecting lines. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take this polygon node down here. Just copy that node with the mask, paste it. I'm going to come down and remove those perturb connections at first. So then I can copy that, paste, 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 and yeah, one more. Because remember, even though we have four, each of those can connect to each of the others. We won't do all of them, that's fine. And then masks can actually stack on top of each other. So I'm just gonna connect all of these polygon nodes to each other, and it will read all of those masks and then apply all of those masks at once to this one background node that is that color we chose. So then I'm gonna to go to polygon and just go on a spree of connecting one to connecting three. And in the preview, you'll see what this is doing instantly. One, two, four now. There we go. And then we can do some other cool ones like two, to three and two, two, four. And then it looks like we had the exact right amount for how many we have here. Connect three, two, four. And now if we scrub through our scene, you'll see that wherever these balls move around the screen, all of their connections stay perfectly locked to their exact center. 
And this is cool, but this is also as simple as this could really be. You could publish and connect as many points on one layer or one node as you wanted. Instead of lines, I could have just a box that's connected to all of these, like in the one graph I demoed earlier. There is a ton of potential to this specific effect, but it is really one tool that you can then use so many unique ways. This is a cool effect, but it also demonstrates this powerful engine behind the scene of publishing and connecting, which really unlocks so much power inside the Fusion page. But that's all I've got for you. Thanks so much for watching. If this video was useful, I would love to know that. Please leave a comment or a like, or if you haven't yet subscribed, we talk a whole lot about the Fusion page on this channel. I like it a lot, it's super cool. And like I said, I am moving and that'll be complicated for a little bit longer. I have some video ideas. Um, I am about to tear down this system and pack it all up. So thanks for bearing with me through all of that. Hopefully, hopefully we, we keep up the videos through that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.